Hey everyone, I'm Josh, and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is dedicated to Braden, and he had asked how to get more piano students and how to become a better piano teacher. This is a great question, and uh, kind of ties into how can I build a business with uh, teaching piano. And I think I'll probably make a course on this at some point in my life, but uh, right now I wanted to give you guys a few tips to get started. When I was uh, 15 years old, I'd been working with my dad. My dad is a stonemason, so like puts stone on houses and mailboxes and uh, fireplaces. And I absolutely hated uh, working uh, construction. So um, I said, Dad, I really don't want to do this anymore. Can I get another job? And he said, well, yeah, I don't want you flipping burgers at McDonald's, though. He's like, because um, I pay better than them, and uh, I want you to learn the like, I don't want you doing that. And I said, okay, um, what if I started my own business teaching piano? He's like, that's a great idea. And I'd taught one student when I was like 13. I think she was six. I was just giving her, going through the baby books with her. Um, and uh, so I said, okay, how am I going to start this business? So my mom was talking to her friend and she said, you know, Josh might start teaching piano lessons soon, especially when he gets his driver license. He's going to come uh, to people's houses. That'll be a nice, convenient way for people to have piano lessons. She said, oh, that that's a great idea. I would love for her, for him to teach my son. And so she said, you know what, instead of just doing that, why don't I have him come play at a little church function, um, a little activity for the church youth, and he can play a little concert, and then he can um, say that he's accepting new students well, that was amazing because I ended up getting six students that day. Um, so uh, a family of four and then that lady and she, she ended up having me teach two of her boys. Well, from that, I got the next door kids uh, after that. So there was two more and then they referred me to two or three others in the area. So just based off of that one event, I think I got 11 students and I always tried to teach about 20 students in high school um, along with practicing two and a half hours a day and going to uh, school and also playing golf and skiing. So I was pretty busy back then, but I, I believe that keeping busy is very healthy um, in inworthy uh, activities, of course. So uh, beyond that, uh, I started my YouTube channel and I remember I was going to the University of Michigan and I was kind of panicked because I thought, how in the world am I going to make any money um, to support my wife and I while I'm there beyond the, I had a little teaching assistantship when I was there that paid for my tuition and a very modest stipend throughout the month. But I thought, how can I do that? I could try and build my um, studio when I get there. And uh, as a side note, you can definitely build your studio through joining a local music uh, teachers organization in the U.S. Uh, music Teachers National Association is very valuable. Um, once you become a member, you have a list of all the other teachers in your area and you can call them or email them and say, I'm just getting started teaching. Here's a sample of my playing. Please do that. Do not just cold call a teacher and say, give me students. Show them that you have some value. So whether it's a recording of you uh, playing uh, a piece that you're very good at or uh, a sample of your teaching so they can kind of see your style, uh, you can you can ask them and say, here's a, here's a sample of my playing. Could you please, if you have any extra students that you're not willing to take on, um, consider sending them my way. Or you can even say, if you need anyone to uh, coach your students, like just a practice coach um, to help them fulfill the assignments that you're giving them, if you want them to have a little extra help, I would love to help out any way I can. Um, and you have to be a little bit cautious because some teachers get a little nervous about that, like, oh, they're just trying to steal my students. But uh, I've actually had quite a few people coach my students um, in the past, usually my siblings, because they're all very accomplished artists, uh, pianists uh, as well. So um, that's another way that you can do it is through an, an organization. The last way that I want to explain in today's video is through Skype. Uh, as I was saying, I was going to Michigan. And so I boldly put out online, oh, I'm doing Skype lessons and I got my first Skype student. And then I had the confidence to ask all of my Utah students to, to say, hey, if you want to continue studying with me, I'll be back for the four months of the summer um, that we're here uh, May, like end of May through the beginning of September. So I'll be there for the four months um, each year. And uh, I will 
uh, be happy to teach them on Skype. If you don't like the idea of Skype, I can of course refer you to another teacher here in the area, or if you wanted every other week lessons, uh, one with me and then one with a live teacher, like one of my siblings, and they actually said, okay, let's give it a try. And I offered a free lesson um, for each of them uh, just to try it out, or at least a free trial, like let's just connect for 15 or 20 minutes, we'll play through one of your pieces, I'll give you some tips, just like a little mini trial lesson. That's another great way to get new clientele is um, to offer them something uh, that has no risk to them. So you can say, oh, I'm offering free 15 minute Skype lessons to try it out and then if you like it, you can um, go beyond that. Once your business is built, you don't have to offer free stuff anymore. Um, I do offer a lot of free stuff through these YouTube uh, channels. I, I believe in providing a lot of uh, valuable content. Um, if you're going to do a, uh, a business or a paid product as well. So that's why I upload samples of all of my paid videos because I want to give something of value rather than just saying, hey, go to my site and buy this um, to help support my family. It's kind of tacky, I think, if you do that. So uh, those are just a few tips. Uh, you can watch my video called Do Skype Lessons Actually Work? If you want some tips on how I set up my Skype lessons, I think that's really um, one of the ways of the future. Of course, live lessons are always gonna be critical because you wanna hear the acoustics of the room, but the reality is a lot of adults just want a specific style of teacher, and if you have videos posted on YouTube of your teaching um, and they like your style, maybe they wanna come study with you, or maybe uh, a lot of my students just say they can't find a teacher they like or that's of good quality in their area. Some, some of these places I teach these students are very remote and they're 100 miles or more away from the nearest university or college or more. Sometimes they live, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So it, it just allows uh, for more accessibility. So Brayden, I hope that helps uh, to answer your first question. Really quickly to answer your second question, how can I become a better teacher? I always like to try to have a very clear cut structure um, to my lessons. So I always tell my students technique, sight reading, repertoire. And if a student is beginning, the repertoire portion can include their method books. I, I really am a huge fan of the Faber adult all-in-one um, course, F-A-B-E-R. I'll link that in the comments section below as well, or the description below. Um, you can also check out my video is it too late to start piano lessons? Uh, and I list a ton of books there that you can use when you're first starting out um, in the description of that. But I'll link the Faber ones below so each of you can see that. I think that's a great place to start or to refresh. If you have taken like a 10 year break from piano, you can go back and refresh all the basics. It's just a two book course. And by the end of those two books, you're at the level of playing Bach minuets and, and then you can just start studying repertoire. Um, for the technique portion, you can check out my Pro Practice Technique series. I'll link that in the comments section below as well, or the description below. Um, just goes through uh, scales, arpeggios, triads, and seventh chords. Uh, a quick little suggestion there. Starting a student on all four of those skills can be a little daunting, so one method that I use in my lessons is just doing scales and triads and inversions to start with, and then once they've gone through all the keys, around, I usually go in the order of the circle of fifths, I will go to arpeggios and seventh chords after that for the technique portion. For the sight reading portion, they are free to use whatever they want if they want to use a hymn book. I also am a big fan of Piano Marvel. Um, I will link that in the comment in the description below. Sorry, this, this video sounds like a promo of all the products I've released on my website, but I'm just trying to give you resources, Braden, and all of you who are wondering, um, to uh, uh, some products and some practices that I've used in my teaching that have helped me become more structured. So again, technique, if they're doing one hour a day, 20 minutes of technique, 10 minutes of sight reading, 30 minutes of repertoire. And then beyond that, if they want to go to two hours a day, <clears throat> I might up the technique to 25 or 30 minutes. Um, I'll probably keep the sight reading about 10 minutes and then I will just add more to the repertoire. I like to also supplement uh, with other repertoire pieces outside of a method book if they are at that level. And then once they're out of the method books, I like to move to repertoire that will help them develop as a pianist. So if they have really weak clarity, I might give them this Chopin etude. That really helps. Or if they're really weak with chords, um, you can give them something like uh, this Takatina by Kabalevsky. This is on the easier side, but. Um, if 
they're really weak in the left hand, uh, something like the Chopin Revolutionary Etude can help. <laughs> That also helps a lot with clarity. So I like to set up a good structure. Uh, a couple of other side notes uh, on being the best teacher you can be. Never stop learning. Still take lessons. I still take lessons. I don't take weekly lessons. I might see a teacher a couple of times a year, but I think that's critical to stay on top of your game. Never stop performing. All of you teachers out there who are not actively performing, unless you have a hand injury, you need to start performing again <laughs> because it will provide so much insight for your teaching and vice versa. All of you performers out there, I think it's a huge benefit to teach piano. I learned so much about my own technique from demonstrating for my students and uh, figuring out fingerings that will work with different hand sizes or um, teaching them on pieces that I'm, I haven't personally, personally performed. A lot of people think that's unethical. Why would you teach a piece that you have not performed? But it's just the reality of being a teacher. Students are gonna bring things to you that you haven't personally played. The piano repertoire is so huge, but as long as you're experienced in the style. So uh, like that Beethoven sonata that I demonstrated with in the previous video uh, from last week, uh, which is from Opus 2 number one. I have not played that piece, but I've taught it before and I've played enough Beethoven sonatas and performed enough Beethoven sonatas that I'm familiar with his style. So uh, don't be afraid to teach new repertoire. You will learn so much about yourself, but at your own style, you'll be able to help your student, but make sure that you are experienced in those styles and always keep performing. The last piece of advice is watch master classes of master teachers. Uh, a lot of those are available on YouTube. Others are available on Medici TV. That is a paid service. Um, I have no affiliation with them, but I've just personally enjoyed watching the master classes on Medici TV. Brilliant stuff. There's enough on YouTube to get you started for quite a while, though. And then attend master classes if you're near a local university university or if a visiting guest artist is playing with a symphony in your area and they're doing a master class, try to attend those. I can't tell you how much I learn from asking my colleagues questions or uh, attending these different master classes that <clears throat> I go to. Um, lastly, just find good YouTube uh, tutorials. I, I try to put out as much good content as I can. I know Paul Barton is a very accomplished teacher as well. I, I've really enjoyed watching his stuff as well. I've emailed him. He's a really nice guy. I consider him a, a great friend, so thanks, Paul, for all you do. And uh, if any of you have any other questions, these are just a few tips on how to build your piano uh, teaching business and also how to become a better teacher. If you have any other questions, email me at josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you've liked this video. Like, comment, um, feel free to send me an email with any follow-up questions or any additional video requests you'd like me to cover. Thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.